Welcome to Flutter Teacher. In this video, we'll talk about very important concept that is decision making in the Dart. So in this video, I will talk about simple if, then if else statement, nested if else, and finally, I will talk about else if ladder in the Dart. So without wasting time, let's get started. Let's look at a simple if. First of all, I need to specify the if keyword here. Then inside the parentheses, I need to specify a condition. So condition must be a boolean kind of condition that is it should result in either true or false. Other than true and false, your condition is not a valid condition. Then inside the pair of parentheses, I'm specifying a statement that I want to run inside if. Let's understand how it works. Condition inside the if will be checked and when condition is true, then only the statement that is the body of if will execute. But when condition is false, then simply the body of if that is the statement inside the if will be skipped that is it won't be executed. Use of opening and closing curly bracket is optional when we have a single statement in the if but as per that documentation it is recommended to use the bracket even if we have a single statement. Let's understand this example. In this case I have created a variable called likes here and let's say the value of likes is zero. I simply want to print a message thanks to hit like button when value of likes is greater than zero. So that's why I have written if here. So I'm checking if value of likes that is if likes is greater than zero, then I will print this statement. You can see when I'm running this program as the value of like is greater than zero, that is condition is true. It is giving me thanks for hitting like button. And this is the extra statement I have written here. Thanks for watching. But consider the value of like is zero. So in this case, the condition inside the if is false then what will happen the part the statement that i have placed inside the if will be skipped that is it won't be executed that's why when i rerun my program you can see this print thanks for hitting the like button won't run and i'm getting the output thanks for watching which is of course the outside of this if statement let's look at this if else statement if else is basically a two way decision making statement that is it allows you to control what to do when condition is true and what to do when condition is false. Let's look at the syntax of these evils. Simply we have to put the keyword called if and within the pair of brackets we need to specify a condition here. And this part is called as a true block statement or we also call this as an if block. Then we need to write the else keyword. Again I have specified the else block or we can say this is the false block statement. So how it works. Condition inside the if is checked. When condition is true, then this true block statement, that is the if block, will execute and the else block will simply skip. But when condition is false, then instead of running the true block statement, the false block statement will execute. In simple words, I can say when condition is true, then true block statement will run, and when condition is false, then this false block statement will run. Let's look at this example. Here I have a variable a with the value 10 and I simply want to check whether the value of a is even or odd. Then I have written if here. I have a condition a mod 2 is equals to equals to 0. So I'm checking that whether a is even or not. So if it is even, I'm printing number is even, otherwise I'm printing number is odd. So in this case, as a has a value 10, which is obviously even. So when I run the program, you can see I'm getting output number is even. But if I change the value of number to 5, and if I rerun the program, you can see as this condition is false, it will come for the else block and it gives me output number is odd. Let's understand what is the nested if else. In so many situations, we need to check one more condition when some condition is true or when some condition is false. In this case, we need to place if inside another if or we have to place if else inside the if or inside the another else. So placing this if or if else inside the if or inside another if is called as nested if else. There can be so many combinations of nested if else as per your requirement. I have written a simple syntax to understand the nested if else. In this case, I have placed the if else inside the if and again I have if else inside the else. So let's understand how it works. Initially, the condition 1 is checked. When condition 1 is true, then it will come for the if block. Then Inside this if, I have one more if that is checking the condition 2. When condition 2 is true, then statement 1 will run, otherwise the statement 2 will run. But initially, if my condition 1 is false, 
it will never come for this e block it will come for the else block inside the else even i have one more if here that will check the condition 3 when condition 3 is true statement 3 will be executed otherwise statement 4 will run as example program i have taken one of the famous example to find out largest number among the three numbers so here i have a b and c these are the three numbers i have and i simply want to print the value of largest number among these a b and c so in first if i am comparing a with b so if a is greater than b then inside this if i am comparing a with c so if a is greater than b and here if a is greater than c it means a is the largest one that's why i'm printing largest number is a but when this condition is false it means c is the largest one then i'm printing largest number is c but when condition is false that is a is not greater than b so there are only two competitors that is b and the c that's why in else block i'm comparing b with c so if b is greater than c then this condition is true then i'm printing b otherwise i'm printing c now when i run this you can see as b is the largest one i'm getting the output largest number is equal to 20 which is obviously the value of b here let's say if i change the value of a to 100 and if i rerun the program you can see i will get output largest number is 100 which is obviously the value of a here and if i change the value of c to 500 and if i rerun the program you can see as c is the largest one as c is the largest number i'm getting the output largest number is equal to 500 let's understand what is lc ladder in some situation it is also called as a efl ladder so don't care about whether it is a lc ladder or efl ladder this lc ladder or efl ladder is actually a chain of condition let's understand that we have a chain of condition let's say when some condition is false then check the next one if it is false then check for next one if it is even false then go for next one so if we have this kind of chain of conditions then to implement this kind of chain of conditions efficiently we can make the use of lc ladder this is how the lc ladder can be constructed so let's try to understand how it works in this situation the conditions are checked from top to bottom and wherever condition is matched the statement with that if will execute so in this case the condition 1 will be checked when condition 1 is true then the statement 1 will execute and it will stop the execution of this lc ladder but when condition 1 is false then inside this else we have if and this if will check the condition 2 when condition 2 is true then statement 2 will be executed and rest of the ladder will be skipped but if condition 2 is false then due to this else and if it will check the condition 3 and when condition 3 is true it will run the statement 3 but if even this condition 3 is false then due to this else and if it will check the condition and we can say condition when maybe a last condition we have then if it is true it will run the statement and even if this condition n is false then due to this last else it will execute the default statement okay the default statement means this is the statement which will run when all of your conditions are false let's look at example program in this case i want to print name of the day based on the day number so i'm considering if day number is one it will be a monday and if it is day number seven it will be a sunday so i have the value of day is three and the conditions will be checked from top to bottom wherever condition is matched then th this particular block of if will execute and ladder will skip and when no condition is matched then the last statement that is the invalid day will execute when i'm running this program you can see as the value of day is three in this case i'm getting the output wednesday if i change the value of day to one and if i rerun the program so this will print the value monday on the screen if i change it to seven and if I again rerun the program, you can see I will get the output Sunday on the screen. And if I make the value 9, which is of course not among this 1, 2, 7 range. So when I rerun the program, you can see I will get the output invalid day. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really like the way I'm explaining the concept, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe my channel and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.